Why, hello there, vanquishers of the wilds. Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Farthest Frontier, Episode 5, Growing Pains. So now that that third field is done, I did mention that I wanted a flax field. And we want one that's particularly sandy. And I don't need a giant flax field, so I'm going to just do a basic uh, 5x6 and put a few 5x6s up here uh, to be able to rotate them. So those are the three next flax fields. Look at all those laborers getting to work. We'll have that area cleared out in no time. It says I lost all of my beans. Maybe that's true. As I said, sometimes the uh, farming is a little finicky and can go wrong. And there's very little you could do about it when it does. Go awry. I do have a quick question for you all. Uh, do you, you think I should build wooden palisades? Or wait for stone? I figured I'll just ask you. No, first poll of the series. There it is, above my head. What do you guys think I should do? So while we wait for the flax fields to be done, let's also start to supply the luxury goods that everyone wants. So that would be pottery and candles. And soap, actually. I forgot about soap. So if we want soap, I might need to have gatherers gather more herbs, as that might be a bottleneck. Let's see. Yeah, I have very few herbs, so we'll get all three going. So candle shop, uh, I'm going to put over here next to the stock room that, uh, that has the wax and honey. And then the potter is going to go down here. Uh, I need to flatten things out, but it's going to go down here where the stock room or the uh, the clay pit is for the clay. And we're also going to need a we're going to need a well down here as well. So I'll put a well in there. In order to afford like guard towers. I'm going to want a few more houses to offset for ta tax purposes. So we'll get that going. Uh, do raiders attack palisades? Yeah, raiders just kind of attack everything in their path. L like breachers in RimWorld. Or sappers in RimWorld. More like breachers. Um, so if you build palisades, it doesn't really help y you to have palisades unless you have uh, guard towers around those palisade walls, or they're just inevitably going to break through those palisades and attack you anyway, and it just gives you repair costs. Uh, so y in order to properly defend your town, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need towers to shoot out of, you're going to need soldiers and soldiering, and you're going to need walls. And if you're missing parts of that equation... You're just paying for the cost without really benefiting from the infrastructure. It's much easier for me to show you than to explain it. But uh, but also, it's, it's pretty uneconomical to wall off everything. That's another, uh, another thing to consider, is that you shouldn't build a giant wall around all your farms because raiders aren't going to do anything to your farms. They're mostly going to attack your markets and your storerooms and your vaults. Your vaults are, um, I haven't built a vault yet because I can't afford one. You need iron for it. But your vaults uh, eventually store your gold. So vaults store town gold and then st storehouses can store gold and other things and markets can store, you know. So those those are your your points of vulnerability and those are the things that should be in your walls. And everything else that you can afford to just replace and repair uh, can be outside the walls. So, for instance, the pottery infrastructure that I'm going to have down here 
uh, can be outside the walls. It's not necessary to be in the walls, and if it gets destroyed, we can replace it. It's not that pricey. So there it is. There's the potter and candle shop. So let me update the priority. Well, actually, build flex fields. Potter. And a potter and candle maker. Right. The other thing that I mentioned is I wanted herbs for uh, for soap. So actually, right next to all these flax fields, there is a nice patch of herbs that I might gather. Because there's a lot of herbs in the area. Because there's these three, these two, and this one. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll put a gatherer back. Um, back there. To supply the soap maker with material. And if you want your, uh, your forager just to focus on one crop, keep in mind that crops have certain seasons. So if the herbs are in season one season and the blueberries in another, your forager can forage both at full efficiency with no downtime. But let me just make sure that I'm not overlooking any other nicer uh, herb spots. Now that might be the best herb spot uh, near, near home seems like it and it looks like you guys want me to wait for stone so i'll do stone palisades not uh not rinky dink wooden ones this trader wants to buy things that i literally don't have and the things he wants to sell me are not interesting pass Oh, the uh, first compost. So the compost yard finally has composted uh, human waste into soil, and I can pick a field to fertilize, and I'm going to fertilize the center field because it has the lowest fertility of all the fields. Although it's currently working on planting double clovers, so it's going to have really high fertility once it's done. But that's, uh, what am I, year 11? Uh, year 12? And it's the first f soil fertility. As your population increases, there's going to be more stuff to uh, to fertilize. So it becomes something you can do more frequently. But as I said, it's not something you can rely upon for fertility. Um, you definitely want to have balanced fields for that. So all the peas got sown. The clovers got sown. And the field, I think, got worked. And we're being raided again. By fewer raiders this time, and they're coming in from the east. That's going to be a little bit easier, because the first building that they're going to happen upon is the town center, which will be garrisoned. Uh, they will break this root cellar and steal some raw fish. Not a big deal. I'm going to let them do it. And the thieves are the ones that steal stuff. The brawlers and the soldiers... And warriors are the ones that just attack. So this thief is trying to steal from my trading post. But he got ganked by Gunnar. And here comes the brawlers. Oh, gun, run. See gun, run. And the brawlers are leaving. They're wounded enough they want to bail. So Gunnar, chase this one. And I'm sending everyone back to work. The second trader that came in is the Iron Clan. And I don't have anything to sell them that they want to buy. So, no trade this year. Hey! There we go. First of the flax fields is ready.
slightly more organic roads, I think, kind of look nice sometimes. Come on, you can get him. You can get him. Gunnar, I believe in you. Did you kill him? I think you got him. No, maybe not. If you're still running, I'm going to guess you hadn't. No, okay. Forget it, forget it. That was a good, good try, but... Yeah, so not a big deal. I lost a root cellar with some raw fish. Um, killed nine, lost no one. Nothing pillaged. Acceptable losses, in other words. So I've got the candle shop going. And they still demand luxury goods, uh, but that only just opened up. And we're still working on the pottery building. So let's... Where is my storage wagon? It's over here. All right, let's move that there. My fish are sick, so I'll hire someone else. Okay, we only harvested 751 of the... Oh, actually, we harvested more than we planted, so whatever. I just might need to fiddle with how many workers work in these fields. And the forger sack is... Done. So I'm going to center it over the herbs that I want to collect. Cool. So that should help out with uh, my herb amount, which allows me to then make soap. Soap is basically just herbs and tallow. And firewood, maybe? I forget the last ingredient. I think it's firewood. So here's an example of a disease. This crop field has bean brown spot disease. Um, currently, 15% of the crops are affected. It has a 4% chance to spread within 50 meters. And it, the tooltip says if you put a two to three year crop rotation, uh, it can minimize the chances of it continuing. So the current crops that are sown the current beans that are sown are going to obviously be affected. But the next time this field is set up to have beans again is another two years. So the the uh, the disease is super likely to disappear before the next time we sow beans. So it's not likely to be an issue. And we have one more flax field that we're waiting on. And let's go ahead and... Uh, start to fit, set up the fencing for this as well. So I'll put a fence there. And surround it. Like this. I don't know what animals would want to eat flax, but uh, I'll keep them away from it anyway. All right, storage cart. We're setting up a fence. So let's get up there. And the pottery is now built. So the we have pottery running. And in this uh, stockyard, we stockpile the clay. I'm going to make sure that clay is removed from all other stockyards. So that we don't um, have to run for it. So now we have candles and pottery going. So... 
Did my healer just die? No, no, no. Okay. It was the healer failed to heal someone and they died in the hospital. I thought the healer themselves had died. <laughs> I was like, what irony. And I guess I'll put a gate in the back here. And then this can run out to the... The herbalist that is forging. Is there a max population? Uh, not that I know of. Depends on your computer's performance more than anything. So 10 dead in 12 years. Not great, not terrible. Oh, uh, you know what I just realized is that road goes straight through that last field. Let's not put the dirt road there. Did I just put the gate in the wrong spot? I did. Right, that's better. Doesn't look like we're going to finish the third field before winter, though. I don't think. That's coming together. So current priority now is flax fields and soap making. So soap making, especially on the hardest difficulty, which I'm currently on, Vanquisher, is important because um, soap is one of the tools to prevent disease spread. It's weird that I don't know when what year this takes place in, but like there is the concept of disease or germ theory, right? But whatever, um, there is soap and soap making. So that's another thing that we're going to want to produce. Weaver, candle, soap. It's a hideously ugly industry. Keep it away from your housing. And I'll put it, uh, I'll put it there. So I wanted, I wanted it somewhat close to the root cellars that store the herbs. And then also, you know, close to wells and everything else. Speaking of wells, the pottery building does use water, but I do have a well there. The candle does not. They use firewood. Okay. Oh, you're so close. Jaws room, do it. Tomond, finish it. I believe in you. Ah, oh, they got it in time. Nice. Okay, so we have our flax fields. In order to see what the hell I'm doing, I'm going to cut some of the trees around here because they're in the way of just vision more than anything else. And then this road should help out the forger shack to reduce the travel time, because right now the travel time is pretty extreme. Dude, Gunnar is retreating from so far away.
Silly. Here he goes. You don't need to retreat. You're a tank. So there's the flax fields. Uh, they need a lot of crop rotation and de-weeding before they're uh, able to yield. But if we take a look at flax, flax has a uh, fertility impact of negative three. So we're going to need to at least plant one clover to offset flax. Flax is heat tolerant, not very frost tolerant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, flax will be here. I'll have working the field here. And then on the other seasons that have just passed, I'll do the replenishing. And then we're also going to have to pick another crop to plant here uh, that likes sandy soil, which would maybe be carrots. Carrots like sand. What about turnips? Turnips like sand. So these fields will be circled from flax to carrots and turnips. Probably. So carrots have an impact fertility of minus two. Turnips have an a minus two. So maybe something like um, clover. Clovers on month two. Carrots. And then the second year will be turnips and clovers. And then flax. So that's minus three, minus two is minus five, minus another two is minus seven, plus clovers is minus four, plus, okay, so I need one more clover than that. So maybe, um, maybe the second season will just be clover, clover, and forget the turnips. Or to shove the term turnips in somewhere. I think, I think there is maybe space for clover turnip clover no there isn't so there's space for turnip clover working the fields and then i could do like clover flax so this could be the rotation that we have so this is plus the the clovers here are plus nine and then the crops are minus seven so it's a positive two fertility per month or per year rather per three year cycle i should say and then also has a space for working the fields so I, I like this rotation. Um, I think I want to flip the work and the clovers, though, on year two. Because these turnips, actually put the turnips in first and then work. Turnips don't have a lot of uh, heat resilience, so we need to plant them early and get them, uh, get them harvested early. So some, some sort of a circle cycle like this, I think will work. Okay, cool. And then all the other uh, farm fields in this area will be the same, just offset much the way I set up the other farm fields, but they need to be de-weeded first. This one has a weed level 32, which is fine. I think I'm gonna skip the turnips this year and do double work. And then after I do that, I'll add turnips in, if I remember. Big if. I am starting to have a little bit of um, gold. So I'm going to put in my first lookout tower. I'm going to stick this lookout tower uh, as close to my market as possible. The lookout towers do benefit from elevation. But I want it as close to the market as possible to protect the market. Because this is a vulnerable spot that I think anyone attacking from the north or west is going to hit first. One look at tower is not really going to be able to repel a whole lot of um, a whole lot of raiders, though. So it really is just a kind of a slight stopgap measure. And I'm going to stick it uh, here and pair that with some decorations.
So the other thing to keep an eye on is how much pottery and candles I have in stock. It depends on how many people live in homesteads, and I want to adjust the work so that there's enough people doing that work. But here is our soap maker now, um, stocking soap as well. So we should see... I have a lot of tallow, and I have a lot of herbs, so we should start to see soap get stockpiled too, which is another luxury good. So they're still, the villagers still call for luxury goods. Um, so I think for, for the moment, I'm gonna ramp up candle and pottery. Or maybe just candle. I'll bring candle up to, uh, to two, pottery's at two and soap's at two. So that's six people working on luxury goods. And that also means um, with the additional candle workers, I should get more apiaries in here. So I'll put apiaries in the, in three apiaries in this farm. And there's four in the other one. It's a little bit longer for these guys to carry the wax, I realize, but oh well. A little bit of an inefficiency is fine, I think. Oh, I see you, wolf. No, oh, it's attacking. I thought I had time for Gunnar to do his thing. Sorry, farmers, but... It's time to kill a wolf. Ah! Howark here got rabies. Got a little bit too, too nibbled. So rip you, dude. <laughs> He's dead. Would palisades around towers do anything? It would, yes, but not, uh, not too much. It would delay the inevitable. It would, it would do, hmm. It's not a bad idea. Um. Yeah, I think, I think actually, I'll take, I'll take that idea and show you. Uh, how much of a benefit it is. It will be a temporary setup because eventually these lookout towers are going to be at the gates and choke points out on the walls. But I can do a tiny little palisade thing here with a palisade gate to keep the guard in there protected in the case of raids. I think that will buy me a little time and allow the person in the lookout tower to shoot. Maybe an extra raider or two is probably what the net benefit of that will be. But it's still a benefit for only the cost of a little wood. Sounds pretty reasonable to me. So last year we didn't get any merchants that we cared about. Oh, this merchant will buy wood and I have 300 of it. So let's move our wagon down there to help stockpile wood as fast as we can and then hire two people. Not selling anything I particularly care about because now we are sourcing the herbs ourselves from that new forger. And everything else is fine. It wouldn't be a terrible idea for me to eventually consider um, trying to retool these farm fields to grow wheat. Oh, and this one... Well, this one's still pretty rocky. So next year, this one will get real crops. Um, just the issue with wheat is it's very demanding on the, uh, on the field itself, right? Uh, impact fertility of minus 6%. But bread lasts longer than vegetables. So I'm losing most of my food due to spoil. And it would help with the spoilage. Eventually, what ends up happening once you have a tier three a town center is you'll end up with a glassworks from a glassmaker and then a preserver building. 
um, to be able to preserve fruit or vegetables or root vegetables or whatever in jars for it to last longer. And then you're also going to be able to get a cooper um, to make barrels in order for storage to store more and last longer. So next tier, once the village advances a little bit, I have a lot more options, technological options, making glass and barrels out of iron and wood, but options to be able to make um, our food keep better year to year. But until then, um, getting wheat would be uh, would be pretty handy. Hey, look, I remembered to put the turnips in. Who would have thunk? So let's consider wheat for a second. Clover, clover, so that's six. If I did, instead of leeks, if I did wheat here, that's a minus 1%, and then the peas is another 3%. And then I moved this clover and the peas like this. This here is a four, negative two, one, two. This is a net fertility of 2% over the course of three years. It doesn't have work though. So I'm gonna move the wheat back a little bit and try to put field labor in. So the wheat is um, very heat tolerant, but not very frost tolerant, but we harvest it a month before the frost comes in. So there's a little bit of a risk of this getting frosted. But um, yeah, this might be a pretty reasonable crop rotation uh, to include wheat. So the current priority now is um, incorporate or make uh, a mill, granary, and bakery as well as weavery. So the whole, all the industry for bread and clothing, linen clothing. So after this second crop field is done growing leeks this year, I'm gonna replace that leek with this setup. So that is clovers then beans. So we'll do clovers, beans, and then the third year is clovers and, oops, peas. Clovers after one month and peas, okay. And then this field, so I have wheat as second year, wheat as first year, so this one will be wheat as third year. So work then wheat. And then this has beans the second year, wheat is beans is third year, so this will be the peas. So this is the peas year here. So that's clovers on second month. Okay. So once this crop rotation of just de-rocking the crop fields are done. This will become the bean year. And then all three of these fields will have the same rotation on different years. Ooh, 13 graduates this year. 57% of my workforce is educated. Awesome. Before this peddler disappears, let's sell him all my wood for 700 gold. He has nothing I want to buy, but the Iron Clan, um, I might buy their tools. Yeah, I'm gonna buy their tools. We've been without tools and tools, um, tools help you with work efficiency for certain work. So we've been, we've been working inefficiently, lacking proper tools for a long time. And immigrants, accepting, and also we're getting raided. Got everything all at once. 14 raiders coming from the east. 
So unfortunately, my little Palisade uh, Guard Tower is going to do absolutely squat to protect. But what I can do is I can actually grab Aiton, the guard, and position him manually to help defend. So I'm going to hit the garrison bell. Hope my fisherman gets out of there. Again, this is another instance of this root cellar going bye-bye. So I might want a, um, I might want another guard tower when I can afford it out here uh, for future eastern attacks. Because as you can see, there aren't a lot of raiders that um, that try to destroy this eastern tower or this eastern um, uh, fissure. So what I can do is I can use the, the hill, the elevation, to my advantage, giving me a really high bonus to anyone trying to mess with that root cellar. And then palisades again. Maybe, maybe it will be effective. Oh, you know, but I don't want it so close to this willow bush that I, uh, I ruin the willow bush. So let's move it a little bit so that I don't lose the ability to harvest the willow bush. Only uh, blueberry bushes can be moved, not willow bushes. Otherwise, you could like have insane meta. So. Plus nine. Yeah, that'll be enough. So it's not, this certainly is not going to help me this year, but it will help me in future years uh, protecting against stupid raids that want to attack my root cellar that has fish in it. These little fish thieves. But this year, yeah, that, that root cellar is gone. It's fine. It's a write-off. So here's eight in the guard, and I can use him to micromanage to make sure that no thieves make it out, because these guys are pretty stupid and they uh, they don't protect themselves very effectively, as you can see. A villager did die, though. All right, so let's go kill that thief. No, no, get the thief, Aiden. I 100%. I click the thief. Because that thief is uh, got to the markets and is making off with something. All right, this stupid brawler's not letting me do it. And you're gonna die. Get back to the town hall. And there goes my guard, right? Oh, he's gonna be carted. That works for me. So let's ungarrison because they're leaving, and hope that the town healer uh, picks him up before he dies. We should see... No, don't she shelter, Hendren. You got a work to do. So we already ran our trade here, right? Another trader's coming in. Yeah, I don't think... Oh, there we go. Escorting wounded villager. It's, uh... It's very jank set up. Here, let me try to get a zoom out. Throwing him in a wheelbarrow. You know how I said cart him? I wasn't kidding. I w it wasn't like I was quoting Monster Hunter World being carted to the medics. Literally, you just haul him in a cart. It's kind of funny. Bills was raided, one killed, uh, one building destroyed, five raiders killed, and then they stole some arrows and bows out of my Fletcher. So he attacked the Fletcher and, oh well, they stole some bows and arrows. We'll work to try to make that not a recurring thing. I, mean, I think the villager that died was the fishermen, because this fishery shack didn't have anyone working. They just didn't make it to shelter in time. These things happen. Trader 2 is an idiot. Wants to buy my stone. Cool. But isn't selling anything I'm particularly interested in.
So these farm fields are almost at an appropriate weed level, which means they're ready to be set up. So this has a year two of flax, year three of carrots. So I'll do a year three of carrots here. Uh, so that was one and a half months, and then carrots, I think, at the end. No, carrots like that. Which means that this year two is going to be turnips, work, and clovers. Spaced out a little bit. Like that. And then this has a year three of... Um, flax. Clover's flax. Like that. So then the year one of this will be the clovers and flax once they're done. And then year one of this will be the carrots. I can put the clovers in for the carrots, but I can't put the carrots in yet because they're currently working. Because I don't want to cancel the current progress they have because it's still removing rocks and weeds. So the flax fields are almost done. Uh, come winter, I'll have to circle back and finish up the, the scheduling. Well, I sure hope that these uh, lookout towers provide a benefit because they're expensive. They're expensive to uh, the soldiering training costs five gold a month, which is the equivalent of five homesteads. So it's it's an expensive uh, investment. With any luck, it will provide the benefit I'm looking for. Uh, this house here doesn't have the desirability high enough to upgrade to a homestead. So I also need to put in some desirable building to the west here. Kind of a low priority, because right now my, t my taxes are fine. But uh, that'll have to be something to be added soon, too. I also have to finish the adding the wheat and beans and peas rotation into these fields. So come wintertime... When the fields are all idle, uh, there's a lot of uh, reworking that I need to do. Three days left. Got you just in time. Unfortunately, he was buying honey for a uh, ridiculously high price, but I, I didn't transfer in time. But we made our money. I now have about a thousand gold. So the third year here is the turnips work in clovers. There we go. Thought I had done that. This soldier is uh, missing a sword, a melee weapon. So I'll be on the lookout for that uh, next season when I can buy one, because I don't have a, a blacksmith or a, a foundry to be able to afford one without just, you know, making it myself. But at least they have a bow. So, Okrin, oh, it's Okrin. Okrin here has a bow, and, uh, and that should help with those eastern attacks.
population is closing in on 100. 150 is the milestone. Uh, 150 and 25 homesteads is what is needed. We're almost in winter. When I'll switch the crops over. And then the last thing I need to do is to set up the bakery, the windmill, and the uh, granary. So this one is clovers and beans. And that's What I'm trying to do is, as I'm sure you've noticed, is stagger the grow times so that the farmers don't have, like, ten places to be all at once. Because then you have, like, crops lost to rot when you have the end times all at the same time and the start times all at the same time. So this is the flax season. Got it. So this one has all its rotation, and then this one needs its rotation. This is clovers and then beans, I think. No, clovers and carrots? All of the farm fields are all set up now, as far as I know. And they're all set up so that they have a positive um, fertility per year. So they'll only become better and better and better. And then each one every three years uh, has working the fields to keep the weed level and the rock level down. So I think we're at a point where it's uh, kind of set and forget. I'll intervene if I need to, but I don't think I'll need to. So let's go ahead with the next step, which is the uh, the granary and the windmill. So the windmill requires heavy tools, and people don't like living near the windmill. So I want to keep I want to put the windmill as close to the houses as possible without pissing off the houses, which would be here maybe. So if the windmill goes there, uh, next to the windmill is going to be the granary to store the grain and the flour and the the wheat. And I'll probably end up moving this uh, southern road um, because it doesn't make sense where it is. And then we'll want the bakery. And the bakery can be closer to the houses because they like it. So that actually can be the thing that makes this house here nicer, more desirable. So I'll put the bakery probably right there once this is flattened. So let's fix the southern road. Which means I have to redo a lot of roads, but that's okay. This road actually only has to go down about this far. And then I'll probably wait until this compost is D. De I, I don't know if when you move the compost yard, if you have to, uh, if you lose progress. I'm assuming you do lose progress. So I'm going to wait until this is fully um, allocated to a farm field. So with that flax, once we have flax in our storage, I'll set up the weavery. We don't actually have flax yet from any of the yields, so there's no point in setting up the weavery because there's nothing to weave. I don't want to jump the gun. And then we'll be down to one heavy tool. And that heavy tool will be used... I'll probably need to buy one more heavy tool because we'll need one, I believe, for the foundry once our tech goes up. The blacksmith forge... Yeah, so the foundry, in order to make iron bars, we'll need heavy tools. And then, in order to make heavy tools, we'll need a blacksmith forge. 
but then we'll be self-sufficient with heavy tools. Thank you for tuning in to Farthest Frontier, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 14th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Pathfinders, 